There is an interesting report there in today's newspapers or yesterday's papers. It's to do with a lady who has brought a claim against RTE and her name is Kasia Sernik. She was sexually harassed in the workplace. She uh, apparently was an RTE newsreader. She's gone to the WRC, the Workplace Relations Commission, and the headline, salacious headline you might put it, is that she's seeking €300,000 damages from the broadcaster, from RTE. The background to this is she's a former uh, RTE newsreader. She was found to be have been uh, sexually harassed by inappropriate texts by a senior newsroom colleague just 10 days before she was due to be married. She complained to the WRC under the Employment Equality Act 1999, alleging that RTE was in breach of the Act by refusing to disclose what disciplinary action was taken against fellow night shift news anchor Noel Fogarty, who was sacked last September. This is very important and it's the nub of this case to a certain extent, or at least it's an interesting legal issue. Was RTE's failure to tell her uh, what disciplinary action was taken against the harasser, does that give rise then to this claim that might succeed for a claim for €300,000 or whatever might be awarded, or did RTE do enough by sacking the harasser? His dismissal was on foot of a finding uh, in RTE that uh, Miss Cernick had been sexually harassed by a series of texts, emails and attempted phone calls in June uh, that year. So one of the texts said, my home and bedroom will be open to you, uh, with another offering Miss Cernick a spare key. This was 10 days before her wedding. She was represented at this hearing by Solicitor Barry Crushell. He specialises in employment law. She brought the text to the attention of her line manager, uh, Mr Fogarty then. The harasser was suspended pending investigation. Miss Cernick was informed she would not have to work with him. Investigators then found that the messages were intrusive, invasive, unwelcome and unwanted, both in their content and in their persistence. The complainant said that she was satisfied with the report, but that she was not made aware of any disciplinary proceedings against Mr Fogarty. She said that she only learned recently from a press article exactly what happened, in other words, that Fogarty was fired. She added that she raised concerns at later me meetings about security arrangements for the night shift on the RTE campus, which she said had many ways in and out. Head of HR for RTE News and Current Affairs, Tanya McNulty, said in her evidence that Mr Fogarty was instructed from the outset of his suspension, pending investigation, not to contact Miss Cernick, either directly or through any other colleague. They also remo removed his security tag access, so he had no direct access to the buildings on the RTE site. She said there had been a series of check-in meetings with Miss Cernick going into autumn of 2021 after the report was issued and while Mr Fogarty was appealing his dismissal. Miss McNulty said that there were procedures not complete at the time of a meeting in mid-October which prevented her from giving Miss Cernick information on the outcome of the matter. She said Mr Ferris could be categoric that Mr Fogarty was no longer employed by RTE in advance of another meeting in December that year, which she said had been attended by the complainant solicitor. Mr Crushell, the solicitor, submitted that the notes taken at those meetings had not been circulated to his client for comment as minutes. Miss McNulty said she was surprised then when Miss Cernick tendered her resignation the following March. She was a very valued, valued employee, a very valued colleague. She had very good relations with her line manager. She accepted on the cross-examination that Miss Cernick had said she found it difficult to be on the RTE campus at night after the harassment. Under further questioning from the adjudicating officer, Maria Kelly, Miss McNulty said consideration was given to switching the complainant to a daytime roster, but that management had never uh, had an opportunity to have that discussion with Miss Cernick. 
Uh, in terms of the human element, the engagement, that's where we feel RTE failed in its duty of care. So uh, Barry Crushill, the solicitor for the complainant, is making the case that RTE failed in its duty of care because they failed to properly engage with her and he claims we would contend that victims of sexual harassment have a right to know the consequences a harasser faces. He said that the broadcaster had been left with a conflict between the privacy rights of the man disciplined over the texts and his client's right to closure. He added that information on the sanction applied could have been given with a proviso that it was still subject to appeal when his client asked. Mairead McKenna, then senior counsel for RTE, she said this is a claim Miss Cernick has made for €300,000 compensation far in excess of the jurisdiction. It's a claim that must fail. Miss McKenna said that the RTE HR officer had been subtle in her communications to the complainant at the December meeting when she had said the perpetrator was no longer working for RTE. Counsel argued that the complainant's solicitor, who the tribunal heard had attended that meeting, should have been able to read between the lines and advise his client on the situation. She said Mr Ferris and Miss McNulty had acted in an exemplary manner and could not be criticised and urged the adjudicating officer to find RTE had made out a defence under the Act. The nub of this case basically is that there was an allegation of sexual harassment by Miss Cernick against Mr Fogarty. RTE then took action and carried out an investigation and suspended Fogarty. RTE then carried out a disciplinary situation which eventually uh, ended up with Fogarty getting dismissed, terminated. The claim from the complainant and her solicitor is that she didn't know what the outcome of the disciplinary was, that she was entitled to know, that she was entitled to closure and that she's now seeking, as I say, €300,000 in compensation. She quit then in March and I'm not sure exactly when Fogarty was dismissed but RTE are saying at the December meeting uh, it was clear or at least uh, there was subtle communications uh, to the complainant at the December meeting uh, when she had said the perpetrator was no longer working for RTE. So RTE will say that they subtly told her even though it may well have been under appeal that the gentleman in question, Fogarty, had been dismissed, but uh, three months or four months later, then three months later, Miss Cernick uh, resigned in March and she's brought this claim under the Employment Equality Act. The decision will be an interesting one. I have a very strong view myself about what the decision might be, uh, but I'm not going to share it here, just in case I could be accused of prejudicing or having any influence whatsoever. Uh, I don't wish to do so and I'm not going to put my two feet in it, I'm not going to put one foot in it, uh, I'm simply going to keep it to myself. I do have a strong view about what the outcome here will be, I'm not going to share it, but that is the situation. Does RTE have a defence? Did they do enough? Does RTE have a defence here? Did they do enough? Did they do what a reasonable employer would do? Or did Miss Cernick have a right to know about the outcome? of the disciplinary sanction against the harasser and uh, was she entitled essentially to closure. Um, interesting case, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Hope you find this video useful, if you do we'd appreciate if you give it the thumbs up down below, hit the old thumbs up button, the like button and uh, you may be interested in subscribing to my YouTube channel. Thanks a lot.